everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and I hope that everyone is having an amazing day. I know I am, and I am super, super excited for today's new video. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have probably seen on my channel in the past some of my IKEA hacks videos. If you have not, I will link some right up here for you guys to check out. But it is basically where I head to IKEA, find some items that are there that might be just like a little bit bland or can be spiced up a little bit, and then I take them home, DIY them, and kind of hack them into new pieces for your space. I also wanted to thank everyone so much for the love and support on my last couple of videos, that apartment transformation, I all the comments were so sweet and thank you guys just so much. I've never done a project like that before. So it was a really, really fun one. And I can't wait to do more of those in the future. And then also on the bathroom transformation I did for my mom. And that one was also a super fun one. I am obsessed with the before and after that one. I think it is such a cool comparison seeing what it looked like before and what you could turn something into on not even a humongous budget, you know? So, and I know a lot of you guys also mentioned you wanted to see a reveal from my parents. I wasn't able to film that sadly because I ended up staying one additional day than they had planned and they were just gone that entire day when I was filming there and I had to head back to LA the same day so there was just no way I was able to film that reveal but they really do love it and yeah I just wanted to thank everyone so much for the love on those videos but today we are focusing on Ikea hacks and if you are not already subscribe to my channel I post brand new home decor and DIY videos every single week and I think we should just jump right into the first one so let's get started for our first project here I'm doing a rug and I've actually used this exact rug in the past and I did a different pattern on it with some white paint but today I'm gonna be doing a kind of like diagonal line zigzag ish pattern um you're gonna see in a second here and I'm gonna be using black paint and I just love how I'm able to alter this super affordable $30 jute rug and just make it look a lot more expensive and something that was sold at a place like Urban Outfitters which is where I got the inspo for this rug from so let's turn this $30 rug into something new Alrighty, so we're gonna start off with the low house rug and I'm folding it in half to find the middle point now something you're gonna see me do a lot in this is I actually use this kind of like jute material almost like a grid system because there's a lot of knots so you're actually able to like measure in terms of knots instead of inches and that's exactly what I did so on the edge far left edge I went up 16 knots and then I went ahead and I used the tape to go into the center section and I just created this almost diagonal shape uh, that creates a zigzag it's a little bit more self-explanatory if you just do it yourself and figure out where you want those actual pieces to be and then what I did after I created that middle sort of zigzag section was I then went in and created the areas that I was going to tape off where there was going to be no paint paint and basically I taped over every two rows of knots and then I left one row empty so that way we had thin black strips and I also went ahead and taped off all of the middle section I could have probably cut a piece of paper to save some tape but I got the roll of tape at the dollar store so it wasn't too crazy for me at all I just went ahead and taped everything off as shown here and then I used a black spray paint to just go ahead and spray on here and I did two passes on each line and I also didn't really mind if some of the areas didn't get fully covered because I feel like kind of a little bit of a distressed look is nice as well so I let that dry for just a couple of hours and then I came back and pulled off all the tape which was so satisfying and I just love revealing rug projects like this when I've done them in the past this one turned out absolutely incredible but I will let you enjoy me pulling off this tape um and that finishes off this really cute jute rug done a throw pillow in a while here on the channel and I used to do those all the time and I've actually seen some comments asking why I haven't done them because it was such a routine for me to throw a throw pillow that was not intentional to throw a throw pillow <laughs> into an Ikea hacks video but I wanted to do it today so I picked up the Vigdis pillow cover and it's like a linen light kind of creamy tone I think it's such a pretty pillow cover especially for eight dollars and we are going to be turning this into kind of like one of those very minimalistic line face artwork pieces that I've been doing lately on my channel okay this pillow is super easy and simple and it's going to cost you almost nothing so I found this really cute design on Pinterest I will link the original below and I wanted to recreate it on this pillow so I grabbed a pencil and just kind of lightly sketched out the design that I wanted to do on here and next what I did was I used some Fabri-Tac adhesive and I kind of traced along small sections of my lines and worked in smaller sections and used a nice thick kind of like charcoal gray yarn and I glued it on top um, this is not going to be the finishing like look of the piece uh, so there's gonna be a little bit more stability in a second I just went ahead and I glued this down that way it held in place so we can work on the next part so I went around and did this to the entire face and as I was doing it I kind of did realize that 
that I probably should have followed the same exact graphic look and done like the uh, red cheeks or the pink cheeks with the red lips because when you have all this gray in this face formation, it almost can look a little wonky if that makes sense. Uh, so I grabbed a yarn in a similar color that was a lot thinner. And what I'm doing is from the back side of the pillow, I'm actually sewing up one side of the yarn that we glued down and then down the other side. And I'm just doing this about every single inch and I'm not pulling it tight at all. This is just going to basically reinforce what we have glued down and make sure that nothing is going to move around. So this pillow is going to be a great high quality finish, if that makes sense. You could, if you really wanted to, uh, s stitch around the entire thing and give it like a full on and like puffy embroidered look. But I just did it about every inch, every inch and a half, as you can kind of see there, just to make sure that the original piece was held down and that finishes off your pillow. And our last project is the larger scale one. And this is using the John Axel, John Axel, John Axel shelf system from Ikea. This is just a super affordable $20 miniature little shelf. And we're just gonna be transforming this into something that looks a little bit more expensive than just the kind of plain basic white metal. We're gonna be adding some contact paper, some spray paint and turning it into kind of like a miniature bar cart is what I styled it as. But you can use this as of course a miniature shelf or even two nightstands cause they're on the smaller side. So let's jump into this one. Moving into something a little bit more larger in size, we're gonna be working with this John Axel metal shelf system. And this is super easy to use. I'm just basically gonna be taking all the leg pieces, taking them outside and using the matte black farmhouse black spray paint, which you guys have seen me use a lot on my channel. I really, really like this one and it gives such a pretty like nice matte finish. So I went ahead and I sprayed all the leg portions with the black because we're actually gonna be covering the main sections with some marble contact paper. So this was actually, I bought this at Target um, and you get 20 feet of it for only like $6. I will say that the pattern is not super uh, crystal clear and it also kind of has like a little bit of a pixelation to it but for the project it definitely worked um but i'm gonna link below an amazon one that's just a little bit better so what i did was i went ahead and i cut around the outside leaving about three inches of excess around all the contact paper sections and then i pulled off a little bit to start and i'm going to be pushing this down making sure that i leave an edge on there that way we can wrap it and you're going to see what i mean by that in a little bit so what i did was i just worked in small little sections pulling a little bit of the backing away and smoothing with my fingers you can also use a credit card if needed and also feel free to poke tiny little holes push out any air bubbles so in order to wrap the corners you're just going to need to cut out the actual corner piece as shown here and then just flip it over and wrap it. So you're just gonna basically push up that edge and then wrap it all the way around to the underside. And it's pretty, I feel like self-explanatory. As you can see here, I'm just wrapping it all the way around, making sure everything's nice and smooth and securing it on the underside. And you're gonna repeat the same steps onto all three shelves. And I'm also gonna link a couple other contact papers that I think that this would look really pretty with below because there are some stunning ones on Amazon. I'll make sure to link those for you guys. And then the last thing you have to do is just assemble it based off of your instructions. So just follow the instructions of the shelving system you're using. If you're following the same one, it's just easier than me kind of explaining it. I also had to hammer in the tops and bottoms to finish off this piece. And lastly, I sprayed a little bit of that matte farmhouse paint in a cup and I just painted it on any areas that I felt like could use a little bit of a touch up and that finished off our shelf. So the last project is one I was actually not even going to include in the video because it did not turn out as a finished project. Basically it did break um, during the drying process and that is because I used something I shouldn't have. I used a glass object as like a mold instead of a cardboard or styrofoam or plastic object, which is what you're supposed to use for cement. So you're gonna see what happens throughout this process, but try to keep an open mind to if you did do this using like a styrofoam bowl or something that you were able to remove easily, how cute this would actually turn out because it's such a great idea and I still wanted to share it with you guys. So I'm I'm gonna try to redo this and it's using an ikea nine dollar mirror and we're turning it into this little tray jewelry holder vanity situation that's really cute so let's get started so here's that mirror i was talking about the less last spin mirror and then this also is a quick creek concrete i got this at home depot it comes in a 20 pound bucket and it is pre-sifted this is the best cement i've ever used so i highly suggest this for you guys and i also use this ikea storage box lid as the base and that's the glass object that ruined everything so basically what i did was i first started out 
by mixing up the concrete. I just kind of do this by eye, but I'm sure there's some form of rhyme or reason to this. I just mixed it up with some water and make sure it's all nice and good. As you can see here, the consistency is like a thick cake batter and I'm gonna be I had to do this a couple of times I didn't realize how much concrete I actually needed but I did create a couple batches of it and smoothed it out in the lid section and I went ahead and I repeated this probably three to four times until I had enough concrete to fill the lid Another tip that I think is super, super helpful when working with concrete is to tap it on your surface or drop it a couple times. This is going to remove air bubbles and also really flatten the top of the surface and make sure the cement is just very equally dispersed across what you're working with. So then what I did was I pushed down the mirror base. As you can see here, I wanted it in the top left corner and I smoothed a little bit of my cement over the top of that. And then I pushed in my glass object and I was thinking that this would just pop right out once it was dry but it did not pop right out once it was dry. So I tapped this a couple more times, kind of let it dry overnight, and then this is what occurred. Okay guys, so here is the project that did not turn out as I wanted it to. I know exactly what I should have done to make it turn out perfectly, but I definitely should have not used this glass. I really thought that it would just honestly come right off the concrete because it's a very slippery surface, but I should have found something that was a little bit maybe more plasticky or something that I could bend and really break out of the concrete because with me trying to then pull this out, I cracked it in so many different places, then tried to cover up the cracks with concrete and the concrete is not the same color anymore. And it just, it wouldn't even come out. So basically I should have just used something to create the little jewelry dish that was um, maybe made of paper or like a styrofoam bowl or something that you can push down in there and easily remove. Uh, then this would have turned out great because look at these sides, like the sides look so perfect. Everything else is great, but it did crack where it shouldn't have. And then this turned out really cute too. Overall, um, I think I'm gonna try to maybe make this project again and then share it with you guys over on Instagram, but I wanted to give you an update on how this one turned out. Alrighty, so that was my IKEA hacks video for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this one and definitely give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you are not already, make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home because I post new content there every single day and kind of more behind the scenes type stuff on the actual stories. I do polls for you guys. It's a lot of fun over there. So definitely follow along over there. But I hope today's video gave you maybe a little bit of creative energy. Head over to IKEA make some similar items. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing Sunday or the amazing start to your week if you're watching this on Monday or Tuesday or even Wednesday. And I will catch you guys all in my next video. I don't want to leave, but I got you. So I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.